to this gut video abstract. My name is Julian Marchese and I am a gut microbiologist. Today I will be taking a few minutes to give an overview of our new paper now out in gut, entitled Microbial Bile Salt Hydrolases Mediate the Efficacy of Fecal Micro Microbiota Transplant in the Treatment of Recurrent Clostridioides Difficile Infection. To give some background for the premise of this paper, Fecal Microbiota Transplant, or FMT, is a very effective treatment for the infection with C. diff and is now recommended in national and international guidelines. However, there are a number of drawbacks associated with its use. These include the unpalatable nature of the treatment, the potential need for invasive routes of administration, the theoretical risk of transfer of infection from donor to recipient, and the complex regulation associated with its use. As such, being able to understand its mechanism and exploiting this knowledge to generate novel, targeted therapies will be of clear clinical importance. However, at present, relatively little is understood regarding the mechanisms of efficacy of FMT in treating C. diff infections, or RCDI. Interestingly, some previous pilot work demonstrated that sterile filtered FMT appears to have similar efficacy to conventional FMT in treating recurrent CDI, suggesting that soluble components such as metabolites, bacterial components such as an enzyme or other proteins, or bacterial viruses may be the key mediators of action. In fact, we believe part of this story involves a small bacterial molecule called valerate, also known as pentanoate, which appears to stop the live C. diff cells from growing. In this study, we chose to explore the interaction between the gut microbiota and bile acid metabolism of CDI and investigated the impact of FMT upon this process. We are testing the hypothesis that FMT is able to reintroduce a bacterial function into the antibiotic obliterated gut microbiome and that this function, which metabolizes bile, plays a role in stopping the spores of C. diff from germinating into the pathological state. We first use 16S, our RNA gene sequencing, of stool samples collected from patients who have been successfully treated for RCDI with FMT. And the aim of this part of the experiment was to explore the impact of FMT for RCDI upon the relative abundance of gut bacteria known to possess bolsor hydrolase, or BSH, genes. These genes are the cake keepers of bile metabolism in the gut. We observed that a wide range of BSH producing bacteria were found in the stool from post FMT patients or from their healthy stool donors, but relatively few BSH producing bacteria could be identified in the pre FMT samples. We next used UPL CMS to profile the bile acids within the stool samples of patients receiving FMT, together with their donors. Using both multivariate and univariate, univariate analysis, we demonstrated that successful FMT for RCDI was associated with a marked, immediate, and sustained reduction in the gut levels of torocolic acid, the major progerinant bile acid. Similarly, FMT was associated with restoration of secondary bile acids, which are well recognized to inhibit the vegetative growth of C. difficile, at least in vitro. Correlation analysis further demonstrated that the relative abundance within feces of bacterial genera containing BSH producing bacteria, such as Bacteroides, was ne negatively associated with torocolic acid. To explore this association further, we went on to specifically examine the effect of FMT for RCDI upon copy number of a range of BSH genes. We noted that in all of the patients examined after FMT, there was an increase in BSH levels consumed with that of healthy donors. We further went on to perform specific enzyme activity assay, looking at the level of BSH enzyme activity within the stool. As expected, we saw successful FMT was associated with restoration of BSH levels similar to donors within one week of FMT, and this was sustained at 12 weeks post-FMT. Whilst this association between successful FMT for recurrent CDI and the restoration of bile salt hydrolase producing bacteria was of interest, we needed further work to demonstrate that this was truly a mechanism underpinning the efficacy of FMT. Firstly, we went on to perform batch cultures. For the first set of these experiments, we first incubated a range of BSH producing bacteria, which we had seen enriched in the gut microbiota between pre and post FMT in a torocole rich media to simulate the distal gut in recurrent CDI. After overnight incubation, the used media was filter sterilized and incubated with C. difficile spores. Basically, when BSH producing bacteria were present, before the spore and torocolic acid interacted, little to no germination was measured. Using mass spectrometry confirmed that the torocolic acid had been degraded to cholic acid by the BSH producing bacteria. However, we need to be sure that BSH was the key function in these experiments. 
and that the lack of germination was not due to the unknown factor being made by the bacteria. So colleagues in University College Cork sent us a genetically engineered E. coli which contained a BSH gene. Wild type E. coli does not contain BSH genes and cannot degrade taurocodic acid. In these batch cultures, only the BSH enhanced E. coli was able to prevent C. diff spores from germinating. Again, strengthening our claim that the BSH is an important factor in C. diff infections. Our final set of experiments were on a mouse model of C. difficile infection. To model recurrent C. diff, mice were exposed to cephalosporin and then orally administered C. difficile spores. Mice were then subsequently given several days of vancomycin to model the treatment trajectory for our CDI patients who often received multiple courses of vancomycin. Mice in the control arm were then administered wild type E. coli, which is BSH negative, whilst those in the treatment arm were administered the same number of CFUs of E. coli, which had been engineered to constitutively express BSH. Our findings were that only in the treatment arm, which contained the BSH enhanced E. coli, did we see a reduction in C. difficile, and the reduction was by as much as 99%. As such, we have concluded that restoration of gut microbiota with BSH functionality removes toracolate, the major trigger for C. difficile germination, and helps restore the normal bile acid milieu in the gut, one rich in secondary bile acids, which inhibits C. difficile growth. This project raises the possibility that rather than giving the whole undefined FMTs, we may consider that a future alternative may be administering BSH producing organisms themselves, or even purify BSH itself. Checking for gut BSH functionality may be a useful means in the future of predicting who might be good or not so good at do for fecal donation of stool for FMT for recurrent CDI.